Hey friends and welcome to my July TBR. I almost said June. I cannot believe we are already in July. Olivia or Liv if you've never been here before. Thanks for clicking on this video. Today we are just going to run through all the books that I plan to read in July and a couple of these or at least one of these I've already started but coming off my readathon, the Suns Out Books Out readathon, I literally have no clue what I'm in the mood to read so I was just kind of browsing my shelves and my TBR cart where I keep the books I've bought recently and just trying to figure out what I'm actually in the mood for and all of this is literally subject to change but I don't have any specific themed videos or vlogs or anything I'm really doing for the month of July which also made it a lot harder to narrow down what the heck I want to read so I have a stack here that obviously could change but the one thing I know that I am going to be doing is I'm going to be participating in Summer Ween this year that is hosted by Gabby Reads and also Olivia Reads a Latte. This is my first time ever participating in the readathon. There is actually one book on my TBR that I have been dying to read for so so long and I was kind of using this readathon as an excuse to do that. Let's just go ahead and dive in and start with my Summer Ween TBR. And the book I am referring to is The House on Needless Street by Katriana Ward. I have seen this literally everywhere. People will not stop talking about it. I think it's actually one of Olivia's favorite books that she's read recently. I'm not quite sure, but I need to read this book. I started it on audio a while back and knew immediately that I had to own this physically because I need to read it with my eyeballs and I am very ignorant when it comes to this book but I'm glad because I just want to go into this blind. I know there's a teenage girl, there's a man, there's a house cat that likes to read the bible, there's like secrets that bind them together but I also like the fact that this is blurred by Sarah Penborough because I absolutely love behind her eyes and it says the new face of literary dark fiction. So I don't know what's gonna happen in this. I know it's not a thriller. It's definitely not a romance. I think it has a little bit of horror in it but also Sundial just came out and I really want to read that this fall. So that's another big reason why I want to read this and I'm gonna be reading it to fulfill the prompt of I think read a book at night and also make a spooky treat or bake a treat to go with your book. I am going to be vlogging the week like I said and I'm very excited to vlog this one because I don't know how I'm gonna feel about it so I guess we'll find out together. The next prompt is Halloween colors on the cover and hooky obviously has a good black, some orange, some yellow, we even have some blue and green. This is just so colorful but mainly it has orange and black so I have been wanting to pick this up for so 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 long. I don't know why I put it off last year maybe because of time but this sounds adorable. It was first a webtoon and it's just about these twins I believe that go to this academy and learn all about their strengths and weaknesses as witches and wizards. I just know that this has a lot of mischief and a lot of adventure which I really really like that. I love a good adventure graphic novel and this one is also middle grade so just in case you're curious I would definitely put this on your list for fall. I mean it looks absolutely perfect so I'm hoping I have a good like summer rainy day to read this book and just kind of enjoy it and be cozy and yeah just enjoy all the little spooky vibes. The next book that I am absolutely terrified to read is Final Girls by Riley Sager. You guys know that he is one of my all-time favorite mystery thriller authors and I think I made the mistake of reading all of his newer titles without having read this one first because with a debut I feel like it's not gonna be as good but I did have someone on Instagram tell me that this is actually their favorite one so I am going to be fulfilling the prompt of reading a slasher. Don't know that it's actually a slasher. I'm assuming it is a semi-slasher at least because there are three girls then two 
and then there can only be one final girl so I think there's just three friends and then one comes back alive and honestly I've avoided reading the synopsis because again I don't want to go into this having high expectations but I'm gonna be pleasantly surprised if I do end up really liking it so I typically don't read horror obviously with my book choices you could probably tell but I still wanted to participate so we are gonna consider this a slasher the next prompt is just a book with the word haunt in the title and let me tell you I had a really hard time even considering any books with haunt in the title Title because none of them look that interesting they all look really scary to me and I don't read horror like I said so I so happened to stumble across and go through my Goodreads list of fall vibes books and I came across The Haunting of Aveline Jones which is actually a series and if this girl doesn't look like Harry Potter in female form to you I don't know who does, but what really sold me on wanting to pick this one up is Gavin actually spoke very highly of this book, saying it was like a cozy ghost mystery, there's a coastal village, and I just feel like it may possibly have a little bit of summer vibes in there as well. Aveline Jones loves reading ghost stories, so a dreary half-term becomes much more exciting when she discovers a spooky old book. Not only are the stories spine-tingling, but it belonged to Primrose Penberthy, who vanished mysteriously, never to be seen again. Intrigued, Aveline decides to investigate Primrose's disappearance. Now someone or something is stirring, and it is looking for Aveline. Turn on your torches and join Aveline in her first charmingly spooky mystery. So this is actually a debut, which makes me even more excited. I did order this on Amazon, and it's supposed to come during the week of the readathon, so if some reason that falls through, I probably will be reading The Haunting of Hill House because I love this show, I've heard the book is different, so my curiosity is definitely definitely peaked with that one. But yeah, these are the books plus Aveline Jones that I'm going to be vlogging and I am just so excited for it. Like I said, this is my first year doing it and it's very odd for me to feel in the mood for spooky books already. But now that our summer readathon is already done and gone, I'm just so ready for fall books. So I'm using that as an excuse to mood read for this readathon. Now we're going to jump into my usual TBR and we're to start with the romance contemporary books because yes I am still on that kick the first one that I would love to read and I'm actually halfway through right now because when I'm filming this it is July 3rd so I did start this book already it is every summer after by Carly Fortune I just don't want to tell you guys anything about this because it's so good but this is the number one summer read like this is it i understand why it's so popular on bookstagram now i cannot put this down and if you also love the summer i turned pretty you will really really like this because in this book we have two brothers that make friends with a girl who just moved onto the lake in a little cottage and this is a dual timeline where we go in the past and learn about their friendship but also in the future about how these characters are interacting honestly i just don't know where it's gonna go especially when you have two Two brothers involved things can get a little bit sticky but let me just say this has the perfect summer vibe to it and I understand now why everyone loves it and I'm thoroughly enjoying it so I'm definitely gonna be finishing this one this month the next book that I am very eager to get to, again, a lot of summer vibes here, is The Beach Trap by Allie Brady. I haven't seen a lot of people talk about this one, but if you love The Parent Trap, the Lindsay Lohan movie, you will seriously love this book because we have two girls that go off to a summer camp and not only find out that they would love to be friends with each other, but they're also half-sisters. You fast forward to the future where you have their father that dies and leaves them in an inheritance and so obviously you have a sibling rivalry here and I think one of them is actually a social media kind of influencer which I think is really cool very relatable shall I say I'm just super stoked to read this it sounds like a great time and I love a good sister dynamic or family dynamic so I think I'm really gonna love this one the next book on my list was so kindly given to me by my friend Kendall and that is after I do by Taylor Jenkins Reid she saw the massive tears I had after reading One True Loves and I knew I had to get a hold of more of her backlist because I think I've said this before but I'm not super in love with her newer books or her newer titles but let me tell you her backlist is where it is at. I can tell that her career really jumped off from these. I 
am obsessed with her writing. So in this book, we have Lauren and Ryan whose marriage reaches the breaking point. They come up with an unconventional plan. They decide to take a year off in the hope of finding a way to fall in love again. One year apart and only one rule. They cannot contact each other. Aside from that, anything goes. I I am so nervous where this is going to go. This just seems so not me, like this is never something I would do and I don't know, this just seems very morally gray and I have no clue where in the world this is gonna go. I just need more Taylor Jenkins read in my life. Bottom line, I need to read all of her backlist and I think this one is gonna be next because I just have a feeling I may even like it more than One True Loves. I don't know though. I don't know if I'm emotionally prepared for another ride like this so we will see if I actually end up reading this in July because I really want to savor her backlist. I will be slowly taking my time with this. The next book I think that was also possibly on my June TBR, I can't remember. I feel like there is a lot of carryover with these books because they're all summary and I really want to read all of them and that is Part of Your World by Abby Jimenez. I think what really sold me on this one is my friend Desi from Darling Desi. She was gushing about this one and Emily Henry also blurbed it so I really think I'm gonna love this one or I hope I do. I do know there is like a big miscommunication trope in the relationship relationship which I also can't stand but let me just read you the first paragraph because yeah the writing is gonna be amazing it says after a wild bet gourmet grilled cheese sandwich and cuddle with a baby goat Alexis Montgomery has had her world turn upside down the cause Daniel Grant a ridiculously hot carpenter who's 10 years younger than her and as casual as they come the complete opposite of sophisticated city girl Alexis and yet their chemistry is undeniable so Alexis I think is actually like an ER doctor or a doctor of some sort and her parents believe that she should also marry like a doctor not a carpenter guy they definitely don't see that coming and so I think there's gonna be a little bit of family tension in this but I mean guys he has a baby goat okay that's not a dog it's a baby goat and I can already tell from the first sentence that I'm gonna love the writing so I really just need to get to this one and then the number one top thriller that I must read you guys this year it has to happen Lexi loves it Keisha loves it so many of my friends back then when this first came out loved this and that is we were liars by E Lockhart I don't know much about this book at all I don't know how I haven't been spoiled at this point honestly I can't even remember when this actually came out okay it came out in 2014 I also have a signed copy so I feel like I just need to read this but I don't know anything about this other than it's a family that has a lake house, I think, or a private island, and they know how to lie really good. They have a lot of secrets. So yeah, that's literally all I know, and that's literally all I want to know. Going into the two cozy mysteries I would really love to read this summer is Shady Hollow by Juno Black. I've seen this multiple times in Barnes & Noble. My friend Lauren read it and said it's so worth picking up, so I decided I would find out for myself. And usually I'm not huge on animals being main characters, but they do have human characteristics, so I think I'm gonna love this one. And the main character is a fox, you guys. Foxes? are my absolute favorite animal. I think they're so cute. I want them as a pet. As far as I know, I think this is just a cute murder mystery. And the fox herself named Vera Vixen, she's a reporter, but she decides to take it upon herself to find out what's going on in the town. There's something bigger and worse than anyone could imagine. So I have never read anything like this. It's definitely out of my comfort zone. And I'm hoping I can get a hold of the audiobook, but this is literally 213 pages. So not bad. I feel like it'd be good to just binge over a weekend and yeah, I'm just really looking forward to this one. Next on my list that I'd really love to read is Arsenic and Adobo. I don't know why I didn't read this when it first came out. I think I was seeing mixed reviews and that kind of put me off, but I need to just read what I want to read and stop having other people's opinions influence what I read because I have a feeling I may actually really enjoy this one. Our main character Lila moves back home to where she originally grew up 
and I believe she starts working as this restaurant because she has culinary experience but she's also surrounded by her aunties that are trying to match make for her so it also gives me like major Finley Donovan vibes but also Dial A for aunties which I just read and loved so I think this one definitely has potential but then there's a nasty food critic that's always coming after the restaurant who turns up dead and so she is the prime suspect and I don't know what to expect from this I think it's gonna be really cute there's even a little dachshund up here I think I'm just really gonna love the vibes of this it just is really cute but I need to just also make my way through my book of the month backlist because I have had my subscription on pause until I can get through the current ones I own. Diving into my fantasy books and I really only have one priority for this month mainly because the audiobook is going to become available to me very soon through my library and it's very hard to get a hold of and that is Assassin's Blade by Sarah J Maas. I am going to be reading or attempting to read through this entire series with a couple of my friends and it's definitely very intimidating because it's eight books and there is no no other way to read a giant series than with friends, am I right? Like I don't think I'd be able to get through this on my own. I've actually read Throne of Glass and I rated it two stars back in the day. I have heard that if you read Assassin's Blade first, you can understand more of where the main character is coming from in regards to her poor attitude and just more of her background in general where she's coming from so I hope that's the right move here for this but I don't know much about this other than I know that she becomes the king's assassin but in this book it's actually four kind of novellas of some of her journey. I think this is also going to be a good place to start because I can read other books in between these stories. Another book that has been on my list for so many TBRs, you guys know how many times I've already mentioned this book. It is A Magic Steeped in Poison by Judy I. Lynn. Again, I don't know much about this, but I picked it up on release day. I was also obsessed with the end pages, which I will show every single chance I can get because this book is stunning, but it is young adult, which makes me a little bit nervous, but I love the fact that it's Asian inspired and it's so vibrant. And in this book, we have a tournament that has to do with tea. So I feel like it's just a perfect cozy book lovers vibe. And maybe on a rainy day, I will be able to make it through this book. But I know a lot of people love this one and say I will love this one, but I think it's just finally time to crack this open and stop being scared of the hype and being scared that I'm not gonna love it and just read it for myself. And the last book I decided to randomly tack onto this TBR, not surprising, but it's a very short book, is Kiki's Delivery Service. I have mentioned this in so many TBRs, or at least it feels like it, but I've seen the movie. It's my ultimate favorite Studio Ghibli movie, and I just need to read the book. It's so tiny. I don't think it's even, yeah, it's only like 180 pages, so even though this gives me fall witchy vibes, I feel like because it takes place on a coastal kind of cottage town, it would just be perfect for summer. So this is going to be my one middle grade that hopefully I can make it through this month. Alright friends, well I definitely have my work cut out for me, as well as my week of summer ween, which I am so looking forward to. Again, my first time participating, so I am very excited. Before you leave this video, leave me a sun emoji if you made it through to the end, and also let me know which book is at the top of your priority list to read for the month of July. I would love to know what you guys are currently reading. Thank you so much for watching this video and supporting my channel. I love you guys so, so much and I will see you in my next video.